Hello and welcome to today's daily prelims practice session. Today we will be taking a certain important MCQs based on the important topics which have appeared in today's the Hindu Daily edition as well as today's Indian Express newspaper. The important topics which are to be discussed have been listed on your screen and a time stamping of the same has been provided in the description box below. So now let us begin our today's DPP session. Our first question is from today's the Hindu Daily edition from the topic monsoon stares at a cyclone threat. The immediate context of this very news article is that IMD has said that there is a formation of a low pressure a depression region in the Arabian Sea and it can have a favorable or a detrimental impact on the arrival of the monsoon in India. We all know that recently there has been a delayed onset of monsoon with four days. So in this regard, IMD has saying that it will depend that in which direction the cyclone will move which in turn will determine the monsoonal intensity in India. If it moves towards the western coast of India, then obviously there will be higher amount of rainfall. If on the contrary, it moves towards the West Asia, that is Oman or Yemen, then the moisture will also be carried towards Oman and Yemen and the winds moving towards India will be devoid of moisture and hence can lead to reduced monsoonal rainfall. So in this very regard, we have taken a question from the monsoons in India. Even if you go by previous year question paper analysis, the, the topics associated with climatology and more importantly, phenomena related to Indian monsoon are very common. For example, in 2017, the question was asked in relation to the Indian Ocean Dipole. So read this question, try to attempt it. DPP question number one for today is, consider the following statements regarding monsoon in India. Statement one says, the onset of the monsoon is first experienced by Kerala in India. This statement is incorrect. The reason being in Kerala, the onset of monsoon is dated at 1st June. But the onset of monsoon in Andamans and Nicobars is around 15th May. So because it is talking of whole India, so be very careful that you do not start India with Kerala and Tamil Nadu. You have to start it from Andaman and Nicobars. Second statement says that the burst of the monsoon in India is impacted by the location of subtropical westerly jet stream. Now this statement is correct because the burst of the monsoon is linked with the immediate withdrawal of the subtropical westerly jet stream from the Gangatic plains. So it happens that Till last May, subtropical westerly jet streams exerts a high pressure over the Gangatic Plain area. And when the ITCZ moves northward, there is a sudden withdrawal of these jet streams, which in turn invites the winds from the western coast of India towards the Gangatic Plains, and hence the monsoon enters into India with a sudden burst. Statement 3 says that the cyclones along with the Indian coast mainly occur during the monsoonal season. Now this statement is again incorrect because generally the cyclones along the Indian coast are not during the monsoon season but either it is during the pre-monsoonal period or the post-monsoonal period. Now what is the reason? We all know that there are certain conditions which are responsible for the formation of tropical cyclones. For example, high availability of moisture, warm water etc. Among all those conditions, there is one condition that is tropical cyclones require weak wind shear. But during the monsoonal period, the wind shear is very high in the atmosphere and that is why these tropical cyclones are not formed during the monsoonal period in general. So statement 1 and 3 are incorrect, 2 is correct because now you have to find the incorrect statement and hence 1 and 3 that is option C will be the correct answer. As far as the answer to the previous year question is concerned, it is B2 only. Now moving towards second topic. The topic reads satellites, artificial intelligence to help certify the fields growing organic cotton. Now we all know that organic farming has gained a lot of significance in recent times, not only in India but across the world. Moreover, this broad theme that is agriculture is one of the favorite areas when it comes to the prelims examination conducted by UPSC. For example, here a reference question is taken from 2019 and the question says that with reference to the cultivation of kharif crops in India in the last five years, consider the following statements. 
So just give yourself a time, read these statements patiently and try to answer this question. But this question gives you a signal that you should be aware about the trends related to the important crops. So in similar fashion, we have designed today's second DPP. Consider the following statements regarding organic cotton production in India. Statement 1 says, Madhya Pradesh is the leading producer of organic cotton. Now this statement is factually correct. You will find the explanation, the de facto data related to the production of organic cotton across the major states in the word file. But this statement is correct factually. Statement 2 says that overall organic cotton production has continuously grown between the period of 2016 to 21. Again, a factual statement reflecting an important trend and a correct one. Statement 3 says, Department of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare is implementing the Cotton Development Program under National Food Security Mission. Again, a factual statement. So all the three statements are correct and hence option D is the correct answer. Now, if you closely analyze this year's films question, there are a lot of questions which have taken facts and data as their answers. So the factual questions are also coming in prelims and hence you should be aware about the recent data of some important themes. As far as the answer to this previous question is concerned, it is option A, 1 and 3 only. The next topic is from the Indian Express Explained section. Topic reads, what is the adverse possession and what does the law commission recommends for it? So, in this very fashion, we have framed this question in relation to the adverse position. Again, if you go by the previous year questions, you will find in the examination that the questions from important acts which are there in news have been asked. For example, in 2017, the question was asked in relation to the Prohibition of Benami Property Transactions Act 1988. So, there were three statements given and you have to find the correct statement. Even this year in 2023 prelims also, there have been certain questions which are asked from certain acts and laws. For example, Evidence Act have been asked. So in this relation, we have framed the DPB question number 3 for today. Consider the following statements about adverse possession. Statement 1 says, the basis of the adverse possession is that land must not be left vacant but instead put to productive use. First. To answer this, you should understand that what do you mean by adverse possession. So basically, let us imagine that I was having a land which I was not using in any sense, let's say for last 15 to 20 years. And this land was occupied or was being used by someone else. Let's say you were using this land and I was sitting abroad and I didn't pay any attention to this land. Now, after 20 years, when I come back to this area and I claim that this was my land, I cannot claim it actually. So the possession which you, which this person is having over this land for last 15 to 20 years will be getting the ownership rights of this land also. The reason for this law was that the land must not be vacant. The land is a scarce resource and it must be utilized in some productive usage. So that is why this is known as the adverse possession and hence the statement one is correct. Now how this adverse possession is governed? This is governed on the basis of Limitation Act 1963. So statement two says that this particular act mandates that any person in adverse possession of private land or the government land for over 12 years can become the owner of that property, acquires a title to that property. Now this statement is incorrect. The reason is the 12 year period, this limit is for the private land, but not the government land. So can there be an adverse possession over the government land? Yes, there can be, but then that possession must be for at least 30 years. So the time limit is on a higher side. So this statement is therefore incorrect and hence a, one only is the correct answer. Now let us look at DPP question number four, which is in relation to the recently released National Institutional Ranking Framework. So the government has released whereby it has ranked various universities and colleges on the basis of multiple parameters. So in this regard, we have taken this question. So if you go by previous year question analysis, the questions from the skills and education themes are very important in prelims. For example, the question was asked in relation to the national skills 
qualification framework and you were to find the correct statements out of the given two statements. So read this question and try to attempt it. The DPP question number four is, consider the following statements regarding the national institutional ranking framework. One, it is published by the Union Ministry of Education annually. Correct. Two, it ranks different education institutions in more than 10 categories. Now this is also correct because there are 13 categories. So again, correct. The IIT Madras in Chennai has remained the best education institution in overall rankings for the sixth consecutive year. This is statement is factually incorrect. So it was not for the sixth consecutive year. Basically, it was for the fifth consecutive year. So that is why this statement was incorrect. Fourth says the Indian Institute of Sciences, ISC Bangalore, has ranked as the best university for the eighth year. This is factually correct. So obviously such factual question, the problem with such question is that if you know the statements, if you know the data or facts, you know them. If you don't know them, you don't know them because there is no concept involved in it. And hence 1, 2 and 4 are correct. So only 3 option C will be the correct answer. As far as the answer to this previous question is concerned, it is option B that is 2 only. Now coming to another interesting topic, DPP question number 5 in relation to the paleo diet. So this article has appeared in today's again the Hindu Delhi edition. The topic is very interesting because an important term paleo diet and certain important insights regarding the nutritional dietary habits of today's population as well as the population which was there in the stone age is compared. So as a reference question which I have taken is from the biology section. So this is a very factual question you can attempt it I know this. Let us come to the today's question. The question says, with reference to the paleo diet, the dietary approach that aims to mimic the eating pattern of our paleolithic ancestors. Now this is important because it is also telling you that what do you mean by paleo diet. So in the context of paleo diet, you have to consider the following statements. There are three statements and we have to find the correct ones. Statement 1 says that the proponents of this diet emphasize choosing the high glycemic fruits and vegetables. So this glycemic basically refers to the amount of carbohydrates present in the food. Higher the glycemic content, it will mean that faster will be the digestion of that food but this will also lead to faster increase in the blood and the glucose levels in the body. So basically the paleo diets or the paleolithic ancestors were not in the favor of high glycemic fruits and vegetables but lower ones so hence statement 1 is incorrect. Statement 2 says that meat, fish, avocado, clarified butter etc are included in this diet that is paleo diet. This is correct. Statement 3 says wheat, rice, lentils etc are excluded in this diet basically the diets which generally we are consuming today it is not a paleo diet so yes it is excluded and hence this is also correct so 2 and 3 that is only 2 b option is the correct answer as far as the answer to this question is concerned it is option a 1 and 2 only now our last topic dpp question number 6 is in relation to the vaccines to target the cancers Immediate context of this very news article is that there are certain researches, experiments which are going on in relation to the mRNA based vaccine. So certain organizations are involved and they have come up with certain studies. Obviously those studies are not very important for us but this concept mRNA is important. Because if you see questions asked in 2022 prelims. The questions have been asked in relation to the mRNA platform or the vaccines like Sputnik, Covaxin, Covishield etc. So the related topics which are there in newspapers automatically becomes important. Try to attend these questions. DPP question number 6 says consider the following statements. 1. Messenger RNA that is mRNA is a type of double stranded RNA. This statement is factually incorrect because it is not double stranded rather it is single stranded RNA. So one is incorrect. Two says mRNA carries the genetic information from DNA to the mitochondria for protein synthesis. Again this is incorrect. The reason is 
it carries the information not to mitochondria but to ribosomes statement 3 says that mrna vaccines uses the lab created mrna encapsulated within the nanoparticles now this statement is correct and therefore only one statement is correct and hence option a is the correct answer as far as the answer to this previous year question is concerned it is option b 2 and 3 only so these were the important topics from the prelims perspective in the context of dpp hope you have enjoyed this session all the very best and study hard